Alright, so you've been working with composition a little bit more in your code, and now that you've been refactoring a lot of stuff to take advantage of composition, you're realizing that you have a really big problem. The entry point of your code is now hundreds or thousands of lines long, and it consists of just instantiating new objects and passing them into other objects. You feel lied to. Composition was supposed to make your life easier, but what is this mess that you have at the top of your program? Well, fear not, because we're going to look at dependency injection, and in particular, one of my favorite frameworks for this. If you haven't watched my other videos on composition or aren't familiar with that yet, please go check those out first. Come right back here and let's go jump into the code. All right, on my screen, I have an example of a class that is built up of smaller classes to demonstrate composition. On the surface, this might not seem so bad because we only have one instance of URL saver and we can just instantiate these dependencies one time in one spot. But if you've been following composition like this, like I said in the beginning of this video, you might have found that you have code that looks like this times 10, or 100 at the start of your program. I just wanted to quickly illustrate how fast this can balloon out of proportion if you don't have some tools to help out with it. So on my screen, you can just see that I've introduced some really simple dummy classes called some composed class and some composed class two. They don't actually do anything, but they do take in one of these awesome URL savers as a single parameter and then just store it as a field. So this is totally contrived code, so don't pay attention to the details here, but let's go see what happens when we try to make some of these composed classes. All right, so these examples are a little bit contrived, but let's pretend you have some spot in your code, quite literally, I've just named a function called that, and let's pretend that this method's responsibility is to go create an instance of some composed class and return it to the caller. If this part of your code did not actually have access to some shared URL saver that is going to be one of the dependencies for this class, then you would have to go actually create the whole thing from scratch. If you consider now that you might have a block of code that looks like this, and maybe at your entry point you still have code that looks like this too, you now have two spots that completely duplicate the code, and that's already six lines of code duplicated twice for something that seems very straightforward. Now let's pretend you have yet another spot in your code, and this one is actually going to create some composed class two, and then call the do stuff method on it. Again, if you didn't have access to this URL saver that is a dependency for this class, you would have to go create the entire thing again. Now you might be sitting there saying, well, Nick, what if I already have access to this URL saver? I can go pass it around. And you're totally right. If you have access to it, it will make this a lot more simple. But I'm just calling out that if you have particular places in your code where you have to go instantiate these things, suddenly you have this pattern duplicating across your code base. And furthermore, even if this code isn't scattered across your code base, depending on the size of your program, this type of thing, like I said at the beginning of this video, if I go right back to the entry point of our program, you might actually have hundreds or thousands of lines long just instantiating things to pass them into other objects. So like I said, at this point you feel duped because composition was supposed to make all of your code cleaner and it's made big improvements for you, but you still found that basically it just moved the problem to the entry point of your program. We're gonna fix that with a tool called Autofac. I've gone ahead and installed a NuGet package called Autofac, so right at the top of this file, if I say using and then Autofac, we can see that we have access to this namespace now. What Autofac is going to allow us to do is actually register the different classes that we want to have access to, and then Autofac will, as the name suggests, automatically create the objects that we want to have access to. It does so by mapping the dependencies that each of these classes have. So when we go to ask for one of these instances, it's able to go then resolve the dependencies automatically for us. So if we had hundreds or thousands of lines of code long like this, let's go see how Autofac can help transform this to be a lot more organized for us. In its simplest form, Autofac is going to allow us to create what's called a container builder, and this is going to be so that we can create a dependency container. That might sound a little bit confusing, but all that we're going to do with that dependency container is register our dependencies to it. You might see this referred to as registering dependencies or registering services, and that might depend on whether or not you're using Autofac or some other dependency injection framework. Once we've finished our registration, we're actually going to ask the container builder to go build that container, and then we can assign it to this variable. 
it is disposable, so we'll put a using in front of it. And then with that container, we can begin a lifetime scope and then actually start resolving things to get our instance. So let's go look at what's required to actually go register stuff. All right, so Autofac organizes things into what are called modules, and we're able to create lots of these modules to help organize our code depending on the different domains or other ways that we want to organize our dependencies. In a module, all that we need to do is actually override this load method, which has a container builder on it. From there, we can actually start registering our dependencies. The container builder follows this type of syntax that allows us to chain different operations together. So you can see that I'm registering the type called awesome URL saver, and I'm also marking that we only want a single instance of it. However, if we go looking a little bit deeper, you can see if you go try this on your own, because it's very small on my screen, that we can actually call other things that allow us to change how this registration works. Now that we have our module created and we've registered our awesome URL saver, we can go have a look to see how we can use that. The container builder itself has this register module method on it, and we can actually pass in the type parameters or a module. There's plenty of other methods on the container builder that can allow you to register modules in different ways, including scanning assemblies and loading things from disk. If that's made you curious, then stay right to the end of this video and you can watch how this works. Now that we've registered our module, we can actually try to get the instance of our URL saver. To actually get the instance of our URL saver, we just ask the scope to resolve the type that we're interested in, which is awesome URL saver. In theory, this is all we need to be able to do to refactor our code for using Autofac. Or is it? Well, what happens when we go run this? When we're debugging and we go to resolve this URL saver, if I press F10 in Visual Studio to step over this line, you'll see that it's complaining that we can't actually resolve this dependency. It tells us very clearly that there was an exception trying to activate the awesome URL saver type, and if we scroll a little bit lower, it says none of the constructors found on that type can be invoked with the available services that we have. Going a little bit deeper, it tells us that it can't resolve the parameter URL normalizer for the constructor that it found on that type. And if you think about it, that actually makes sense because the only thing that we registered in our container was awesome URL saver. Autofac at this point has no idea about the other dependencies that we're interested in. That means that we have to go register those types as well. So fortunately for us, that's a really simple exercise to just go register them right in here. All right, I've gone ahead and registered the other dependencies that we needed to go create an instance of awesome URL saver. And again, I wanted to point out that I am calling these other ones with this single instance method on them as well. This just means that the container will only have to generate one instance of this type because I know personally these individual classes don't carry any state and there's no reason for me to have to go create new instances of them. It's not like the singleton that you're probably thinking of that has some globally accessible shared state that can be modified. That's usually the type of singleton that we want to avoid. If we debug this again with all of our pieces registered and now press F10 to step over the scope resolve line, we can see that if we check the URL saver and the text is very small, so I apologize, it does have an instance of that type for us. And this program doesn't actually write anything to the console, but you can see if you read the text in the console that we had no exceptions and the program actually ran successfully. Having a quick look back at the entry point of the program, you can see that we replaced all of the custom instantiation with a few lines of autofac creation for our container. And to clarify, it's not that we just deleted all of the other instantiation, it's just that we modified it to pull it into modules, and this will allow us to organize our code however we would like. And that's just a quick example of how you can use Autofact to clean up a lot of the code that you have that took advantage of composition. Personally, for the types of applications I write now, I can't even try to write normal code without using Autofact to do my dependency injection. I find if I'm prototyping things and get to a, roughly about 100 lines of code in my program that are just instantiating things before I start doing any work, that's usually about where I'll switch over to Autofac and start organizing my code to be a little bit more clean. And as I mentioned, Autofac is able to do some really powerful things, so we only looked at registering a single module in our code for this example. But because you stayed right to the end of this video, if you watch this one right here, you can actually learn about how you can do plugin loading with Autofact.